plenty of room. Okay, uh, my name is Mark Wheeler. I'm with Zebra Technologies. Hopefully, you know you knew that coming in. And um, uh, welcome. Even if you're just here to, to rest your legs a little bit, you've got those trade show legs. Uh, appreciate you investing some of your time with us uh, this afternoon now. So what we're going to do, um, I am uh, Director of Supply Chain Solutions for Zebra. What that means basically is I look after our warehouse and plant operations business in North America. In that capacity, I'm out working with customers most, most days uh, in the warehouse, in the plant. I get you know, pretty, pretty down in the weeds in terms of operational requirements and help our customers and partners uh, you know, assess and, and decide what, what technology is right for them and the right way to apply that. So uh, today what we're gonna look at is disruptive technologies. You know, you see it out here on the floor. If you've been across the hall to automate, you know, clearly there's tremendous innovation on the technology side that are disrupting long established warehouse management practices. There's this really strange dynamic going on in the market right now where we have warehouse management systems that are using barcodes and using terminal emulation user experiences pretty much the way they have for the last 30 years, right? The terminal emulation as a client goes back 50 years plus, uh, as, you know, in terms of using control key sequences if it's Unix based or function keys if it's one of the IBM based systems from a heritage perspective. That is still the dominant user experience, dominant uh, user interface in warehouse and material control applications. And, uh, and adjacent to that, you know, we have all this new disruptive technology coming in. So we're going to talk about that. I'm going to kind of break it down by different, what we're calling dimensions of, of disruption or of transformation, and kind of show you, you know, where we are today, or maybe uh, you can find where you are today, and where some of these different dimensions of technology are going, and give you some information about what you know, the Zebra's point of view on this, and kind of where we're headed. How many of you are Zebra users today? Right. Pretty much, okay, great, thank you. Thank you for your business. We appreciate it very much, and work very hard to continue to uh, to earn that. We're going to talk about technology platforms. So, you know, that's dominated today, this year, last year, you know, probably wrap up mostly this year, in the move from Windows Mobile at the mobile edge to Android. So let me ask, how many have made the move to Android already in your warehouse? Okay, we think about half the market has made that move or at least started down the path, and the, the vast majority of the rest of the market should follow this year, uh, by the end of this year, we expect uh, you know, the, the majority of the market to have made that transition over. We'll talk about what that, what that means and what that involves. Um, I'm going to talk about sensor-based visibility. I've talked about this for a couple of years now at Promat and Modex, this idea that we can move from glimpses of reality, which is a barcode scan, to constant visibility. Okay, so constant visibility, I'm using sensors, I'm sensing the physical world directly, and I'm analyzing that, and I'm making decisions, I'm taking action based on that data. So we'll, we'll, we'll address that as well. A little bit about the current business climate. Uh, we've seen this continued transformation of the supply chain, uh, restructuring, investing, new workflows, new facilities, escalating customer service requirements around Omnichannel, kind of fleshed that out a little bit. We, um, our, our own vision survey says that warehouse space on average is going to continue to grow in uh, the high, you know, in like 18% roughly over the next few years. So we see more investment in, in warehouse space and that's uh, more of a North America centric number, but also the average size of warehouses continues to grow in, in excess of 450,000 square feet, which not too long ago was considered to be a pretty uh, sizable warehouse. We've got a tough labor environment. Right, so we hear more and more in different areas of the country that attracting labor is, is more challenging, retaining it is more challenging, um, it's getting more expensive, and all of that means that we have to have a, a, a strong focus on providing the tools to, to our workers that are easy to learn, easy to use, and productive to use on an ongoing basis, and that they're comfortable with, uh, and that they, they, they want to adapt. And finally, you know, the idea that technology is advancing faster on some of these dimensions that we'll talk about than companies in general are able to ingest and apply to their operations. We just completed a vision survey where um, eight, eight out of 10 respondents, so these are across uh, verticals and across regions, so North America, Europe, and Asia, but eight out of 10 said, you know, implementing new technologies in the warehouse is critical to us reaching our, our operational goals. 
75% from that same study said, and we're not doing it fast enough. You know, we're, it's, it's, it's in the way. So we'll, we'll talk about that as well. So what does on-demand mean? Uh, whether you're a manufacturer, a wholesaler, or a retailer, chances are your customers, or at least a portion of your customers, are requiring faster service, you know, speed. Uh, that's what's driving the WMS providers to move more into waveless processing. We need to be able to insert work in real time, not wait for a, a batch of work to build up so that we can release it all at once. Uh, we see warehouse management systems moving uh, in that area. This idea of, of, of uh, paneling units kind of shifting down, almost no matter where you're a manufacturer, wholesaler, retailer, chances are you're seeing this phenomenon, which at the end of the day means you've got more transactions, you've got potentially more cost, uh, and more complexity to drive the same amount of revenue as you had uh, four or five years uh, in the past. And that, you know, it's a pretty common experience, and, and, a, and so we got to look at technology in terms of mitigating that. Um, returns management. Online demand, online orders, uh, the return rate is about three times the return rate for in-store purchases. So you know, we've seen the, the focus on returns and doing that effectively and doing it in a cost-effective way, increasing. You know, in the past, you, you do a walkthrough in the warehouse and in the far back corner that was dimly lit that nobody really liked to talk about, that's where returns were handled. Now it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process that's gaining floor space and, and material handling support and information system support because it's just more important to, to many businesses uh, going forward. And we expect this to continue. So how are, how are companies really responding to this? Well, we see growth in all of the you know, you look at the, the four main ways of fulfilling online demand, uh, ship from the, from, from the distribution center, drop ship to a manufacturing partner. It's driving, you know, a lot of manufacturers to make uh, investments they haven't had to make before. Uh, buy online, uh, pick up in store, or buy online, ship from store. Growth in all of those workflows and significant growth. So uh, in this past holiday season, we saw Kohl's did about 40% of their online demand ship from store. That's a lot of lines, right? So that needs IT support in the store to be able to do that. It also requires a level of inventory accuracy that many retailers didn't really have to worry about in the past. So nine out of 10 in our vision survey say, you know what, inventory accuracy, location level inventory accuracy is foundational to be able to meet the market demands for um, omnichannel commerce. Uh, almost an equal percent say, you know what, RFID is going to be part of delivering on that location level accuracy. So we've seen passive UHF RFID in the retail supply chain continue to grow uh, with about, I think, 8 billion tags consumed in, um, in uh, 2018. And we'll talk more about that as we go forward. From the facility standpoint, you know, re-optimizing distribution networks, positioning inventory closer to market. Uh, core Wall Street Journal in... Uh, 2018, we saw Jet.com from Walmart build a 200,000 square foot DC in the Bronx. Uh, uh, Amazon built an 850,000 square foot DC in uh, Staten Island. So, you know, positioning inventory, building building warehouses in the five boroughs is not something that we were looking at doing a lot of uh, not too long ago. So, the change is continuing, and um, you know the the. Uh, it, it's driving the distribution network, it's driving distribution facility investments, and obviously driving uh, technology investment as well. So when we think about how do we, how do we think about all this in, uh, technological change that's going forward, here are some of the dimensions that uh, we think are important and that are worth focusing on, and I think it helps to kind of look at them independently a little bit. So the first one would be physical automation. And you know, that's, a, that's an obvious area of innovation as you walk around Promat, if you go across the floor to uh, automate, lots of, of uh, variations on, on you know, a couple of basic themes. You know, one is the, uh, the shuttle-based uh, automatic storage and retrieval system that has taken ASRSs from something that was very limiting in terms of flexibility uh, in the past to something that is increasingly flexible in terms of I can reconfigure it, uh, I can drive lots of throughput through it because I've got multiple shuttles that are individually powered and I can control them. Um, mobile uh, industrial robots or autonomous robots, you see all over the floor, from tabletop to pallet size and everything in between. Lots of innovation around that. You know, what's enabling that? I think, you know, fundamentally it's the, uh, it's the batteries, the lithium ion batteries that provide lightweight um, uh, power so that we have these 
self-powered units that can last a long time. We've got uh, uh, capable and relatively inexpensive sensors, 3D sensors, and the tools to analyze that data in real time, the processing power, the, uh, the analytics, the machine learning capability, so that these can operate safely in and among human beings. And when you look at fixed robots, you know, we, we had you know, reliable, uh, cost-effective, six degree of freedom arms in the market 30 years ago. And you know, so why are they taking off now in some of these challenging use cases? It's really because some of the same fundamental technologies. You know, it's 3D sensors, uh, it's the analytics, the machine learning to be able to uh, capture that information, analyze it, and take action on it at the work cell and do so in real time. You know, it wasn't very long ago that, that uh, you'd see the same kind of, of uh, implementation of, of an anthropomorphic arm and it would take the, 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 the pictures with the sensors and then you know, it'd sit there and wait for about four seconds for the computation to catch up to uh, the physical world. Now it's very smooth, it's uh, uh, near real time. So that, you know, that continues. On the warehouse management system side, you know, that's the core of our warehouse. We're not going to get very far without that. The WMS companies are um, in, you know, investing to uh, leverage some of the, a lot of the technologies we're going to talk about today. We absolutely have to uh, move along with them. When I talk about workflow optimization, what, I, what I'm getting at there is that as we look at the mobile edge, you know, in, in, uh, maybe in today's world or you know, in the past you had uh, a, a wearable client or, a, or a, a handheld terminal, you could implement voice, you, maybe you could go to pick to lights. Now we're moving into an era where wearable displays are, uh, we think, a viable uh, alternative for worker interaction. Augmented reality uh, is going to be a, a, uh, a viable technology at the point of activity. We're going to have more and more complexity at the mobile edge that we want to be able to leverage. And just as we did in the voice uh, with the voice applications, we kind of separated. The WMS determines what's going to happen and when it's going to happen and what priority. And we're going to have this voice solution that sort of executes at the mobile edge using this specialized technology. That's just going to continue to grow, we think, uh, in terms of uh, workflow optimization. On the worker augmentation side, that's kind of the story about you know, what are wearable displays and augmented reality going to mean to the task worker in the, in the warehouse that's handling materials. We think it's uh, uh, an important innovation. There are a lot of things to work out to make it a practical solution that a, a worker can put on and wear for eight to ten hours day in and day out and drive value, but the, the value is there to be unlocked for, uh, for the right solution. Uh, operational visibility is something I've been talking about for, for a couple of years now, and uh, we, we've made a, a really important advance uh, in the ability to, to leverage operational visibility in the warehouse, in the plant, and in the supply chain with the ATR 7000 announcement that we made here at the show, it's live in the booth. Um, I'm gonna cover that in a little more detail in a few minutes. And finally, data platform. So as we, we wanna leverage the industrial internet of things, we wanna leverage all this sensor technology, all this intelligence that we have at the edge, uh, all this location information that we can get about assets, about materials, uh, about people, to create a more efficient, more effective, safer environment then we need to have a consistent way of ingesting that data, of analyzing it, and interfacing it to the execution systems, where it's a warehouse control system, warehouse management system, what have you. So we'll talk about you know, Zebra's vision of the data platform and how we're moving along that dimension. So these are the dimensions that uh, uh, we're gonna to touch on. I'm actually going to uh, start with worker augmentation. <coughs> so uh, we still see some paper-driven processes out there. For the most part, workers in the, in the warehouse today are using some sort of real-time technology. We'll still see some lab, label driven, which is essentially paper. Um, but uh, for the most part, we see, we see that. We see uh, handhelds uh, still widely used. In fact, uh, just at, uh, this week, Zebra is bringing out the MC9300. So that if you're familiar with the MC9000, everybody familiar with the MC9000? I mean, that family of, of devices has been out in the market now for over 15 years. It's the workhorse of the industry in a lot of, a lot of ways, over three and a quarter million um, uh, sold over the years. And we did a complete re uh, redesign of that uh, and introduced that. So, you know, that'll enable you to bridge the world between Windows CE, Windows Mobile, and character-based user experience and full touch and Android. Moving to the right on the maturity model, we see you know, wearable technology. So wearable on the arm, voice, um, uh, hand-mounted, wrist-mounted, finger-mounted scanning, all, all options there. 
the, the opportunity to move to a touch optimized user experience. So we have form factors like the TC8000, now the TC8300, that's proven to give double digit productivity over a traditional handheld that's got a keyboard, right? But it requires software support because the vast majority of the, of the uh, warehouse management systems out there, whether it's homegrown or the latest delivery from one of the premier vendors, is probably going to depend on or assume a terminal emulation client out there on the floor. And that client will assume the existence of a full physical keyboard. So we need the software support at the mobile edge to be able to leverage the hardware form factors. TC8000 has been out for three years already. Uh, like I said, when uh, in the right use case, double digit productivity gains just from that form factor, we want to be able to leverage that. So you see sort of an IT vision of the world and an, and an ops vision of the world when we talk about worker augmentation. On the IT side, um, Windows CE, Windows Mobile is going end of life and even end of extended support uh, next year. So it's, it's time to make the move. Uh, we need to get to a supported environment. As an IT professional, you need to bring your team from the Windows Mobile world of this is how we deploy and support and secure and update devices to the Android world of this is how we do that. And when you do make that transition, you're going to be very glad that you did because the tools are a lot better. Um, and and, and uh, you're going to have a, a, a much more productive um, experience in terms of managing that infrastructure. So that's the IT side of the picture. On the operations side, um, they've got to have solutions that are intuitive to learn, that are easy to use. When they bring in new employees, they've got to be able to have people become productive quickly. Our vision survey that we just completed show, uh, said that you know, on average, uh, our, our customers spend about six weeks training new employees before they're fully productive. Kind of range from four to eight. That's a long time, right? That's a lot of sunk cost. We need to be able to reduce that. And we can do that with, with the right type of user experience. So there's, there's hard dollars there from, from, uh, from the operations side. And then as we go forward to the right, uh, we see this more adoption of wearable displays, more and finally augmented reality. So augmented reality presumes that I have really precise information about the location of the user, the orientation of the user, uh, that I'm able to recognize what's in their field of view, and you know, we'll, uh, we'll get there. Um, so when we take that and we put it into the WMS and workflow optimization uh, dimension, you start to think about, okay, well, I want to go to a full touch experience. How do I do that? You know, the first step I would say is to talk to your WMS provider and find out their roadmap for full touch uh, support. So every, every WMS supplier should have uh, a defined roadmap for that. Now that may or may not line up with your upgrade uh, plans. You know, there's a lot of reasons why you might or might not want to upgrade a WMS. And so, you know, you may not, you may look at that and say, well, that's nice, but I'm not going to get there anytime soon. How do I leverage these new tools? How do I provide that kind of user experience um, without having, having to go through the, the WMS WMS upgrades that might be necessary to get that native Android support? And the answer to that is uh, you look at the tools from Avanti, you know, formerly Wavelink, you look at the tools from StayLinked, and they can provide, you know, a, uh, a touch user experience at the mobile edge while the, uh, the WMS is still interacting with uh, Telnet sessions. You know, one or more Telnet sessions, the WMS hasn't changed, is not impacted, and uh, they can provide that touch user experience and will support the, um, uh, you know, the full touch modern devices. In fact, uh, Zebra's been working with Manhattan Associates for a couple of years now on an offering called uh, Manhattan Touch Warehouse. So anybody heard of that? Any Manhattan users in the, in the, in the shop? It's one, okay. Uh, this is a, a good example of what can be done though. So we, we create a client that uh, out of the box will enable uh, every workflow in WMOS and will support a specific set of Zebra devices, including like the wearable, the TC8000, and, uh, and the all-touch devices. So you get that productivity um, out of the box. And then as we go forward down the path, as I said, with workflow optimization, and we have more and more options at the mobile edge. We've got voice, we've got you know, handheld, we've got wearable, we've got uh, uh, wearable displays, and, and really the, um, the uh, user experience, you know, just, just as the user experience for a voice flow, you wouldn't just take the data that you were presenting on a terminal and run that through uh, a voice engine and just speak that out. Uh, you're gonna rethink the entire workflow based on 
what voice can do. When we go to wearable displays, you're going to do this. You're going to want to do the same thing. You're going to want to think about the workflow and the information I present. So you're probably going to have a workflow engine that's specific uh, to that technology, is aware of what that technology can do. And that's where we get to this idea of a distributed architecture being more common, not less, as we go forward into, uh, into this new, new world. So let's talk about visibility a little bit. <coughs> um, what I'm saying is we're, we're, gonna, we're moving from an area, uh, an era, where pretty much all material control is, is uh, sensed by a barcode scan. So that might be a human being coming up and scanning a barcode. That's the most common. Or it might be you know, a highly engineered material handling system that's scanning that barcode. Conveyor, ASRS, what have you. Uh, but we're scanning that barcode. And that gives us a glimpse of reality. It gives us a little glimpse of, yes, this material was received in this lane at this time. Um, and it may or may not be true, right? There are problems with running the business with a barcode. Barcodes get damaged. Uh, we usually have some kind of workaround to deal with that, like we allow the user to key in the information. Uh, if, if they get to a location and the, and the location barcode is damaged, we often give them the ability to key that in. Well, you know, a lot of end users figure that out and, and can sometimes use that to work around the system uh, rather than through it. I mean, that's why even with 100% scanning, uh, you know, you continue to have inventory errors and, 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 uh, and that kind of thing. So what we want to do is move to, uh, from that environment over time to one in which we are increasingly sensing the physical world directly. So uh, instead of getting a glimpse of reality and using rules and making assumptions about what's actually happening, we're sensing the physical world directly. This is already happening in other areas. You know, on the, on the plant floor, you know, they're talking about uh, this, this mix of technology that we're talking about for the warehouse. In the plant world, it's considered a fourth industrial revolution. I mean, could you hype it anymore, right? This is, uh, you know, it was steam and then it was electricity, then it was computing power, and now it's AI. And it's a fourth, and so expectations are sky high in the plant. In the clinical healthcare environment, it's, it's revolutionizing healthcare delivery. In the retail store, the same thing. But it's all based on, uh, I have visibility now to assets, to people, and to materials that I didn't have before, and I'm able to, uh, to act accordingly. The challenge in the warehouse is that we're already doing things pretty well. You know, uh, we have a highly structured facility where every location is identified and measured and labeled. We have a WMS that has a model of every location in the facility. Uh, we have a WMS where we've built rules into it that says, here's how we, you know, we got to balance things like space utilization. We got to balance uh, travel time and, and productivity. And we come up with all kinds of schemes and rules to try to uh, manage those trade offs. And we go live with the WMS. Do we really know how well it's working? Do we really know? Uh, how close we are to optimum, where the real opportunities are to change that and make it, make it operate better? Do we have visibility to the toll that congestion might be taking or that, you know, in, uh, paths that we're taking that weren't optimum? I would say that we don't uh, have that, that information, uh, but we can. And uh, visibility is going to be an important part of that. So uh, you see uh, all kinds of technology that's uh, uh, coming on um, that can provide uh, location awareness in, in the facility. So in the Zebra uh, world, for instance, we have a couple of different active technologies, like uh, WearNet that is long range, and we see this applied in like yard management applications. We have Dart, which is ultra wideband, and it gives really precise uh, uh, locationing and, and a rapid uh, with with rapid acquisition. And you know, this is what's used in the NFL for player tracking, for example. But you could use that to track lift trucks or anything else. The challenge with some of those active solutions is that the tag itself. Uh, is, is fairly expensive. And so you wouldn't be able to use it on materials, for example. You could use it on assets, you could use it on people, but you probably wouldn't use that on, on materials. The, the technology that uh, the industry has pursued for materials tracking through the system is passive UHF RFID. It's low cost, it's long range. Uh, I can encode a lot of data on that tag. I could do so really cheaply. And with the adoption of RFID in the retail supply chain, the tag cost has come down significantly. So if we could use that technology in supply chain applications, uh, you know, that would be uh, you know, potentially a really, a really powerful thing. I mean, if I had my suppliers, you know, maybe you're already uh, force, uh, enforcing uh, some supplier management, you've got a, an ASN, you've got a serial shipper container code on every pallet that comes in the door. What if every one of those uh, SS uh, serial shipper container code labels had an inlay in it? 
And as soon as it came into the door, you saw it, right? Well, in the past, what we had to do is, is, is engineer portals on each dock door to say, okay, I, I, with a high degree of certainty, maybe 99.8, um, I know that this tag just passed through that door and I know what direction it went in. Um, the, the announcement that uh, we're making at, at ProMet this week is something, is an innovative technology we've been working on for a number of years. It's called the ATR 7000, okay? So it's a completely new type of RFID reader. It's an appliance that you hang from the ceiling and is actually an array of antennas inside that appliance. And so not only can we cover a large area with one, up to 1,500 square feet, and we can not only tell you that somewhere in that 1,500 square feet, I'm reading a tag, we can tell you where that tag is, X, Y, Z, within a couple, three feet. So that is a revolutionary change in what UHF uh, RFID is able to do. I think it's phenomenal, uh, uh, has phenomenal potential for, for plan ops. I think it has a phenomenal potential for receiving and shipping docks in particular and you know, various processes in between. Um, as well. So, you know, this idea of moving from, you know, I like to use the analogy of easy pass versus uh, Google Maps. You know, uh, the, the portal is easy pass. I know it went through this portal at this time. I don't really know anything else about it. Uh, Google Maps says, I know exactly where it is all the time. I built all my algorithms and functions based on that assumption that I know where it is all the time and look at all the things I can do. I can identify congestion and go around it. I can reroute it. I can show you where the Starbucks is. I can do all these different things, but you have to assume that constant visibility. And so we need to get our WCS and w, WMS uh, solution providers to uh, incorporate that, I would say, into their strategies around how do I optimize work? Um, how do I provide intelligence so that uh, the end users, the customers can pursue continuous improvement? Because if I have that kind of visibility, that kind of insights where I can go back and basically replay the day and see where my lift trucks went and see where the wasted motion is and, and really get a handle on, here's my best performer, here's my worst performer, what's the difference? You know, what, what, what's this uh, driver or person doing differently than this one is? And really dial in on that. Uh, I think there's, there's a tremendous amount of value there um, um, as well. So that's where we're going with visibility. I said there's more edge technology coming on all the time, Bluetooth low energy, uh, if you're familiar with uh, BLE beacons, it's a, it's a phenomenal technology, very low cost that can provide location awareness. And we see that being implemented. The Android devices, virtually every you know, Android device from the wearable to the handheld to the vehicle mount, they can read these beacons. And you can you know, infer location based on that. We're already doing load verification for private fleet. So if you have a private fleet, you can put these beacons in the trucks and as I drive in with a pallet, I'm automatically sensing that, hey, I'm in the right truck, I'm in the wrong truck. And I'm, I either get a nice green screen or an angry red screen, you know, that's yelling at me saying, hey, wrong truck. And I didn't scan anything, I didn't key anything. Uh, that's where we want to be uh, with these solutions. Another, I think, good example of what can be done in terms of visibility is Smart Pack Trailer. This is a solution we've had out for a couple of years. Um, it's, a, it's also live in the booth, and you know, this is a, a sensor that you would mount at a dock door that is staring into a trailer while it's being loaded or unloaded. It's a 3D sensor and the analytics, and, and, uh, as well as a, a video uh, capture. And so when a, you know, we've got a lot of spend, a lot of OPEX spend in transportation, right? Inbound and outbound. How much visibility do you really have to the utilization of those trailers? If you're paying for inbound freight, do you really know uh, how carefully those trailers were loaded, what the utilization was? On the same on the outbound, right? So from an operational planning standpoint, we capture that information and, and make that available. And then from a, just an op operations management standpoint, we're able to drive alerts in real time and drive management action in real time. Because we want to be able to capture the information, we need to be able to analyze the information, but it's not much value unless we're able to drive action. So we can drive a, a dashboard and we can drive alerts directly to the dock manager to say, hey, this load is going to miss their cut time based on the rules that we have, or this load is below target on, you, on space utilization um, uh, based on the rules that we preset. And so you can drive that. And uh, you can see that in the booth. If we go to uh, the next dimension of transformation, which is data platform. So you can see as we move into this world, we're going to have uh, lots of solutions that are increasingly sensor enabled. Uh, even the devices themselves, the printers, the scanners, the mobile computers are, are getting more intelligent, they're getting more censored up, uh, and we're collecting lots and lots more data 
off those devices. So uh, when you look at um, you know, the, the opportunity to leverage big data in, in, in a manufacturing plant environment, I think there's a, 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 an acknowledgement that you need an IoT platform strategy, right, in the plant, because you're gonna have all kinds of different data sources. You need a single platform to bring that together. We're doing the same thing uh, with our Savannah offering in the warehouse. So first and foremost, the, the job of Savannah is to manage the Zebra infrastructure. So we're collecting uh, data from all of the devices. It's your tool for, for to have you know, single dashboard visibility to your, to your infrastructure, no matter where that is, anywhere in the world. Uh, it's also the, the heart of our uh, Savannah location engine, or our locationing capability. So regardless of any of the locationing technologies that we've talked about so far, it all comes to one location engine. You can drive analytics based on that. And that's really important because uh, depending on the facility, depending on the problem we're trying to solve, uh, the location edge technology is going to be different. UHF may solve this problem. Uh, Dart may solve that problem. Wi-Fi, RSSI may solve another problem. But either way, we're capturing uh, X, Y, and Z location on materials, assets, and people. We need to be able to bring that together. And we can do more over time. So uh, in terms of if you're in uh, the food supply chain, you're dealing with food safety issues. If you're in the pharmaceutical supply chain and you're looking for traceability, if you're in premium goods and you're looking for item authentication and identifying counterfeits, lots of folks looking at uh, different blockchain solutions to be able to you know, answer those questions. Uh, is this on the recall list? Just regist registering a receipt, you know, is this a valid product? Um, we can leverage the Savannah platform to register those blockchain uh, blockchain events as well. So that's where we're going with data platform. The, the idea of platforming though is extends well beyond that. So our, our mobile computing portfolio, again, as we go to Android, single hardware platform, single software platform, it starts at the operating system level and it builds up from there. So if, if you're a Zebra user today and you're going to Android, you need to be familiar with the mobility DNA suite of software and tools. This is all designed to make your lives easier. This is all designed as an IT manager to make it easier for you to control, uh, to update, and to secure your infrastructure. There's a whole bunch of utilities out there that are designed for your operations team. You can provide them with the rich experiences uh, that they want, and it's gonna work across the entire portfolio because of the platform. Same thing in the print environment, single operating system across everything, same thing on the scanners, and there's software tools all across all across the way to be able to, to leverage that uh, going forward. So how does this come together? On the inbound side, I think you know we with uh, the ATR and other technology, we have more value that we can extract from uh, UHF RFID in supply chain applications. Um, we can get to no touch receiving. We can get to real traceability. We can get to proactive alerts based on what's on the dock. If you have material that's been sitting there too long, maybe it's a cold chain item, uh, and you need to make sure that's handled within a certain time window. If you have high value items, if you have uh, regula uh, regulated items, a class two pharmaceuticals or something in healthcare, uh, we can proactively alert uh, the, the doc management that, hey, action needs to be taken uh, on these items. On the inbound side, a lot of times you wanna have a mobile solution. We got printers now that have full shift battery packs. We got tablets now that have full shift battery packs. We acquired uh, Explore Technologies last summer, a full line of fully rugged devices, uh, uh, tablets of different sizes, 10 inch, 12 inch. We made another acquisition in, um, uh, in the area of, of, of tagging and temperature monitoring cold chain with temp time in February of this year. So that brings in passive and active uh, temperature logging devices, temperature monitoring, de monitoring devices. So again, if you're in food and you're looking at the, the FISMA compliance and, and cold chain tracking, if you're in pharma, uh, uh, same thing. We're uh, uh, moving to, to uh, incorporate that into this model, into the data platform, into the analytics. On inventory control, uh, this is, you know, IC is often forgotten, but it's really the finger on the pulse of the operation. Uh, poor location level inventory accuracy is a tax on, on the operation. We have to be able to, to uh, drive to higher levels of inventory accuracy. Every location error is a, is, uh, has a root problem. It's a person problem, it's a product problem, it's a data problem. Uh, and you gotta figure out what the root cause. This is part and parcel of running a good warehouse, right? You, you're, you're driving to higher levels of, of inventory control. What we've seen 
the investments made recently, leveraging some of this uh, edge technology along with mobile platforms to, to drive to higher levels of, of uh, location level control. Uh, mobile robots, uh, both in the retail environment and in the DC that can go around and uh, count. Uh, we've seen uh, partners build drone-based solutions. So think off hours, bulk materials. I can use a drone with RFID or barcode and I can uh, assess the, uh, the inventory. And I may not always be able to say, yes, this is exactly the count in this location and it matches my uh, system of record, the WMS. But very often I can say, uh, this, this, uh, what I'm sensing here in this location is consistent with or not consistent with uh, the count in the system of record. And if it's not consistent with the count in the system of record, I can dispatch a human being to go out there and, and take action and follow up and figure out what's, what's really going on. On the fulfillment side, this is where you know, we're going to see the, the majority of the investment. This is where a majority of the opportunity is. Yeah, in most warehouses, it's customer facing. It uh, consumes about half the labor in the DCs. And this is probably the first use cases where we'll see uh, wearable display technology, just you know, taking our wearable on the arm, taking our wearable scanners, taking voice, and extending that capability to, to wearable display. We think there's some, some real value to be captured there. Um, um, in, the, in, in different picking and, and fulfillment operations. There are you know, limitations to the existing set of tools and, and we can definitely take it to, uh, to the next level with, uh, with wearable display technology. On the transportation side, we're gonna improve visibility. So we're pretty late in the investment cycle now for electronic hours of service. Those of you that have a private fleet, you've probably made that investment. You're in compliance with uh, electronic hours of service. But we're moving forward with uh, you know, cold chain monitoring out in the field and uh, asset control and asset visibility out in the field as well with some of the uh, solutions on the, on the uh, transportation side. So some of the takeaways, I mean, again, you look at all the new technologies coming along and it's smashing up against uh, the, uh, the warehouse environment. I think a, a lot of us don't always appreciate the extent to which we make assumptions about what a WMS is and how it works, about what a mobile client is and how it works, and all of those assumptions I think are up, up for questioning and uh, up for, for innovation um, and uh, as we drive forward into this uh, sort of brave new world. So with that, I'd be happy to take any questions. All right, I encourage you to, to stop by the booth. We have a tremendous a team of experts in virtually every technology and every product that Zebra makes, and we'd love to have uh, host you over at the booth. Thank you very much.